Hey, Eastern Oregon, welcome to this January 26th version of AM Live on EOA, your connection to Eastern Oregon, and we're also on Roku. Killed that one. It's 2023. I have to keep reminding myself. It's almost it's January. Like, is almost over. It's second fr first Friday. Damn, I was hoping it was second Friday. <laughs> Is there a second Friday? Yeah, it's Friday. <laughs> oh, Friday. the Friday. Yeah, Friday. but that doesn't even matter because I got <laughs> you, stuff you, all weekend. You don't really say, hey, it's second Friday. No. Yeah. No. Uh, so Hobby Habits back on as a sponsor. As my, I didn't know exactly what we were going to do starting the new year, but uh, um, Joe and Hobby Habit, my sister, they're back on as a sponsor of the sports show. And uh, I was in there yesterday. Man, it's cool. And like, oh, dude, you want to talk about Joe's like the kind of dude that is like a kid in an adult's body. Yeah, uh -huh. like he's such a nerd. Like it's, but that's the kind of person you really need you to have, have to, to own the. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They got all kinds of cool stuff, and I mean, I can spend an hour easily in there just tinkering around with. The you know how unique got. it is that we actually have a full blown hobby shop for, the, mean, for our size. For yeah, our size, very, right? Yeah, it's just. Well, I don't know if the public's supposed to know this, but he's working on getting a new slot car track in there too, which will bring all the nostalgia of the '90s back to Hobby Habit because yeah. that's where, I, you know, you could find kids every weekend at Hobby Habit playing the slot cars, and yeah. he's trying to find a big slot car track to uh, get back in there. Yeah, would be that's awesome. I that was like one of my favorite places to go as a kid is like go to the hobby shop. You know, mine was the baseball car store, but similar. Yeah, it's a hobby. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yep, he's doing. They're doing good in there. It looks really nice. They got the new window labels up. It's all modernized, and if you go inside, everything's modern now. It's not all yeah. dusty craft supplies. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not bagging on the old one. I mean, it was right for the time, but right. it's 2023. Things have changed a little, and it's yeah. completely updated. Well, and talking about sponsors, Valley Insurance is back to doing our weather sponsor for the next few months. So. You'll still get Gabe for a little for a Glad while. Glad to have them, yeah. So Gabe is going to have jaw surgery in April, and so that'll put him out of commission for a bit. But uh, all right, want to do sports? Sure. Right. Uh, LHS Girls Wrestling Senior Day got canceled yesterday. I found out after I made a post, and you know, like I didn't, I had no <laughs> idea. Um, the athletic director Goodman said it'll be made up on a date to be determined. So I don't know exactly when it's going to be. Um, there's two senior girls that weren't soccer players that are going to be on my show in the next uh, week and a half. So pay attention to that. LHS girls and boys basketball is this Friday at home versus Baker girls varsity at six boys at seven 30. That's a big game. I mean, Baker beat us both ways in Baker. Mm -hmm. um, we had a really bad second half on the boys. The girls hung with them the whole game until the last couple minutes. So, I mean, it should be a good game. It really should. EOU men's and women's basketball are at home all weekend. The women play Walla Walla at noon on Friday. So, remember these Walla Walla games, they throw everything off because Walla Walla is a seventh-day Adventist school and they can't play at night. Right. So, we play noon and two on Friday, which is weird. Okay. But kids get in free. That's kids' free day. So if you got nothing to do and kids are off school, kids are off school too. I'm pretty sure Friday and Monday are days off. At least they are for my kids. Um, go check it out. Uh, the EOU women's basketball team is number two in their conference and they're number 16 in the country. They play the top team in the conference on Saturday. Um, LC State is undefeated in the CCC women's wise and EOU women play them Saturday at home. And that game starts at four o'clock, which is not normal either. Saturday games are usually at 5, so pay attention to that. It changed a little bit. Um, the men will host LCSC on Saturday as well, and they'll, that'll be at 4 o'clock, and the men are sitting at 3rd in their conference, and 
that conference is up for grabs outside of, I mean, I think C of I will win the conference, but mm -hmm. second place and on is pretty much, I mean, we're locked in at three right now. Um, L, our C of I is number one in the country. So wow. they're going to be a tough beat. We play them next Tuesday on the road. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a tough game. That's going to be a really tough game. And then to round out sports, I have a funny baseball story. In 1963, Major League Baseball player Gaylord Perry, you probably heard the name, he's a yeah. Hall of Famer, um, he said they'll put a man on the moon before I hit a home run in a Major League Baseball game. This is in 1963. On July 20th, 1969, just 20 minutes before Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, mm -hmm. Gaylord Perry hit his first and only Major League Baseball home run ever. Really? Yeah. Oh. Huh. 20 minutes before a man walked on the moon. <clears throat> That's funny. Now, you know, there was a movie called Brian's Song. What that was like. That's like way ahead of my time. Yeah, but still it's a baseball movie. And I think I think I think he was, I mean, it was based on a true story. Huh. And I think Gaylord Perry was it seems like part of that story, part of that story was in that movie. Possibly. I'm to I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen the movie, so I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't know. No, it's it I think it's Kind of, it's about two two baseball players that were friends and kind of come up through the ranks, and one of them dies eventually of. Was it a B movie? No, no, it was it's a, a baseball movie, and I've never heard of it. It was a big, it was a big, yeah, it was a tearjerker. What I remember year? that? Oh, so it's a chick flick. <laughs> well, this is before chick flicks were <laughs> chick flicks. Yeah, it's not like The Natural. Yeah. Like the natural. I mean, I know the natural. The but best movie ever made. No, I know, but I don't. I don't. But well, that's the natural is like all just, the whole movie is baseball. No, no, it. no, no. It's not. It's not like that kind of a baseball. Oh, okay. Movie. Yeah. So it's not a baseball movie. It's like it's got baseball in it. Right. It's more about the relationship between these two players. Gotcha. Gotcha. Than gotcha. it is about baseball. What year? You know, I want to say seventies, early seventies, maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, it was a. Uh, I mean, when I was a teenager, I remember, you know, so it was the mid-70s. Well. Huh. Let's yeah. check it out. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, somebody... that's it for sports for today. Yeah, <laughs> get, get up there and support. Like I said, LeGrand playing Baker tomorrow. That's huge games. S 6 and 7.30. And then EOU tomorrow at noon and at 2. And then Saturday at 4 and at 6. Big games. Yeah. Especially for the women. I mean, they can beat LC State. They move into uh, tie for first in the CCC. Hmm. That'd be good stuff. Yeah. All righty. Well, let's uh, look outside. It's a crisp morning. Sunset was coming up a minute ago on the cam. It was really pretty. Let's sit, uh, see what gave us. The European model is showing some pockets of fog heading into Thursday morning out towards the southern half of our region. Otherwise, that diminishes during the day as those clouds build by the evening hours. Otherwise, lots of sunshine region-wide the first half of the day, beginning with a light southerly wind flow here in La Grande, helping to warm those highs up to near 50 the first half of the afternoon before we see a slight westerly wind component the second half of the day, gusting those winds up to 25 miles per hour in spots as that cold front moves in, bringing that thicker cloud cover as we head into my seven day forecast sponsored by Valley Insurance. Much of us will be waking up into the 20s into Thursday morning, followed by that mild afternoon with eyes into the 40s, with the exception for that cold spot holding into the 30s and burns that warm spot 54 in Pendleton. Much of us will see a mix of rain and snow at times into Friday, with the exception for the far southern part of our region where we won't see much action until we hit Saturday evening. But by that point, I think all areas of eastern Oregon will at least see some snow on the ground before that precipitation gets out on out here Sunday morning. We go dry, lots of sunshine into early next week as that Arctic front moves in, dropping those highs into a mix of 20s and teens. Overnight lows between Monday and Tuesday will drop into the single digits for much of us, although up above 3,000 feet, expected temperatures below zero. <laughs> a lot of information on that. Too much for me to soak on in that, that graph, yeah. <laughs> so, but no, it's kind of funny. We're 50. Today. What's that? It's going to be 50 today. It'd be nice, maybe. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, no, I was talking to Gabe the other day, and he was he was complaining about what all of us complain about when you watch the weather from Portland. You know, is is like La Grande isn't even on the map. I mean, you know, sometimes it'll say Baker City and Pendleton or 
I mean, anyhow, it was so it's nice to be able to have all that data uh, from from him yep. putting that together. So thanks, Gabe. Good job. Uh, all righty. Well, Kevin Rainey from Youth for Christ is going to be with us here in just a minute. And uh, uh, right after this. Oregon's weather can oftentimes seem unpredictable. One minute it will be raining, then it will be sunny and wonderful, then snowing and then sunny, then the next it will be raining cats and dogs, literally. So how do you prepare yourself for such flip-floppy weather? Well, by tuning into EO Live Weather with me, Gabe Curtis, of course, the most accurate weather forecast in all of Eastern Oregon. I'll keep you informed with daily weather updates that can take an in-depth look through the next seven days. Because if cats and dogs are literally going to fall from the sky, you will want to know. EOA Weather, right here on EO Live, your connection to Eastern Oregon. Now on Roku. All right, we're back, man. How are you? Doing well. Thank Good. Thank you guys for having me on the show. Yeah, you bet. So. And our, our background today is Be The Story, and that, and because we're recording for your event tonight. That's correct. Yeah. And so I guess let's let's start there, Kevin. So tell tell us about what's coming up. Yeah. So uh, so each year we have an annual banquet, and this one um, is coming up this next Friday, actually. So uh, it's called our Be the Story event, where uh, we have home hosts that'll actually uh, be having guests over to their house, and we do a catered meal for eight that um, Class Act Catering does for us, which they've always done a phenomenal job. Yeah. So. The, the food's probably the bigger draw almost than the, than the program <laughs> sometimes, I think. But yeah, so we'll, um, they'll have guests over and we have a, a program where people can kind of hear all about Youth for Christ and some really cool testimonies from students and um, be able to hear about what's going on in the ministries. So. so what does Be the Story mean? Well, so as we talk about it through the year, um, we always want people to be able to see the story of different kids. So we talk about testimonies and kind of where kids are in their journey um, as they're trying to come to know the Lord and being involved in the ministry. Um, and as you can imagine, we have kids at all different levels of that where they have nothing to do with God and those that have made decisions and are plugged into a church and pretty, pretty active. So we kind of like to tell stories of the kids throughout the time. And, and this event is an opportunity for um, our donors and folks that want to jump on board to help be the story, help to fund all the programs and things that happen at Youth for Christ um, up at the J House Youth Center on a, you know, daily basis. So, yeah, it's an opportunity for them to jump in now. And this is kind of this is your major. Is this your major fundraiser for the year? Yeah, um, this is the big fundraiser of all the ones we do. We do have quite a few different fundraisers, kind of all right in a row right here. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the year seems to be the way it works out. But yeah, so this is kind of our major fundraiser. We're expecting about thirty home hosts, so about two hundred and forty some odd guests or so. And the other cool thing though, is if you're not at a home host and you just want to join and see what we're doing um, on our website or through your website, I think it is, they can actually jump on the, the link for the stream and be able to actually watch the program, still be you know able to interact with it and uh, through our website and do all those things. So you don't actually have to be at a home host to participate, but that's uh, just one way we tried to put it together. So people can kind of have small groups and yeah, and we went to this a couple of years ago. I mean, we used right. to have a huge banquet where we'd have all those 240 together down at Valley Fellowship when, when they were uh, still down there as a church. And I mean, the building would be cram packed with people and you were there many times. So, um, which was great. I mean, we love doing that and I hope we can get back to that at some point, but I think COVID still kind of keeping everybody a little leery about big group things. And so it's just kind of hard to get everybody together sometimes for those kind of big events like that. But so we went to this online version, I think, two years ago, mm -hmm. um, and it was really well received. I, I think, you know, some of the folks um, especially said that it was nice because they could hear a little bit better because, you know, when you're in a room of 240 people, even if there's murmuring at, a ta at right. tables, you can't right. hear much. Right. Um, so from a presentation standpoint, they were able to, to hear more of what we were saying and what was going on a little bit better. 
Um, and I think it kind of made almost like home group kind of Bible study type times for them where they could kind of have some good times of fellowship and prayer together as a, as a group and, you know, hear about the ministry. So, well, and that was kind of the, 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 the point of the bigger, the bigger banquet was, is that you would have someone host a table. Yeah. They would invite their friends to be a part of their table. So it was kind of a combination of a public event, but it was also the emphasis of, of somebody buying a table and inviting friends yeah. to it. And, and that's still kind of the same right, way. Right. The and home that's hosts kind of, still do the same right, thing where they're paying yeah. for the meal for eight and inviting guests over right. to hear about the ministry. Right. So. Which I think, I mean, that makes it even more personal. I mean, if I'm inviting someone to a banquet with, you know, 250 other people, that's one thing. Excuse me. But if I'm inviting them to my house. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And the food is provided. I mean, you know, that's part of the thing. That's like, that's a win. I don't, we don't have to cook for them. We just, yeah. 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 And, so that works out well. We have kind of a, a drive through system up there where yeah. those hosts just uh, come up and they all have pickup times and we have a bunch of volunteers. that will be yeah getting everything together and boxed up and brought out to the cars so they can take it home and yeah have their meal together. So. Yeah. Cool. Now you and I have been involved in the media part of that. I don't a know. A long time now. A long time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it could be it could be close to ten years or a little bit longer uh, more than, than that. that. I think. Yeah, I, I've been at it for sixteen. Well, so I know I, think, I have. Yeah, I and, think we've been pretty close to the whole time. Almost, yeah, so. yeah, and and so and I and you know I, I I I express often how much I appreciate you and Kim, and I wish Kim could be here today because she is very much your partner in this oh, whole thing. Definitely. You know. She's the better half. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely the better looking half. Yeah. That, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's all right. I, I got the same thing in my relationship, you know, it's not a bad deal at all. No, so. uh, but uh, the, I mean, just the longevity, longevity of youth leaders being involved for a long period of time. I was a youth pastor for six years and uh, which is, a small amount. You've been at 15, is that right? 16, 16 years, 16 years yeah. you know, in this one location yeah. doing this. 20 years in youth ministry total. Right. So, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's just an incredible uh, legacy because over that, I mean, you, you, I'm sure now after 16 years, you have kids that have come back. Some of them are your leaders or some of them oh, are yeah, yeah, involved. I'm going to yeah. talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So, um, that is one of the cool things about the ministry is, you know, it's very relational. So as we uh, see kids graduate and go on and some go off and go to work for a while and then they come back, we have, I think, at least three or four of our volunteers currently were former YFC kids. Mm -hmm. um, I've even got board members that were for former YFC kids at one point. Um, so it is kind of a neat thing to be able to see them come kind of full circle where the ministry really meant a lot to them, mm -hmm. uh, made a major impact in their their life and their walk with the Lord and, and they want to see other kids have that same opportunity. So they're, they're pouring into kids on a weekly basis and being in their clubs and drop in centers and things like that. So, yeah. And that, I mean, it's just gotta be, it's going to make a huge amount of difference. I mean, so I don't know, I don't know, you know, how high school and that's primarily you primarily have people at the J house that are in high school age, correct? Uh, high school and middle school. So okay. it's kind of a, a mix of both. Okay. Oh, that's uh, right. Okay. So it depends on which, which ministry time you show right. up to, to who, who the major majority of kids are from. Yeah. Um, so our lunches that we do two days a week, we get all that's high school only because okay. middle school's closed campus. But I mean, we see anywhere from 150 to 190 students. Wow. So um, each day, for those taco Tuesdays and mac and cheese and chicken nuggets on Thursdays. So, <laughs> but you know, we have a huge group of volunteers that are up there just loving on kids and yeah. serving each week and making the meal and making it go really amazingly well for, cause you know, I know when we were in school, um, it was like an hour long you had for lunch. Uh -huh. They only have 30 minutes at this point. So that kind of helps to, uh, probably get us more people because they have less options where right. to go. Yeah. But at the same time, that means you got to serve a lot of people really fast. So right. they've kind of, we've got it down to a well-oiled machine at this point after years of doing, doing those meals. So, but the, the cost of that has got to be pretty, I mean, hundred, over a hundred kids yeah. for lunch. Well, it's definitely every Tuesdays gone up and in Thursdays. the last couple of years, as yeah. you can imagine. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's free to kids. So right. there's no cost to the students that are coming over. 
Um, thankfully, we have a great group of donors that uh, support the ministry on a monthly basis. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's part of our just program expenses. We know that food costs are going to go up and we have to fluctuate flux with that some, you know, yeah. obviously, and uh, continue to do it. But yeah, there's, there's a significant amount of cost. I think we're probably somewhere around a thousand dollars a week in food for kids at this point. Wow. So, wow. And so, uh, I mean, that's just, that's amazing. Talk to me about the other programs that you have during the week. Yeah. So we also have a drop-in center. So, um, that's middle school, high school, both probably a little more predominant middle school, just because once uh, they start infiltrating all the high schoolers go, I'm not sure I want to hang out with my <laughs> brother and sister. Um, but so yeah, middle, you know, middle school, high school. So it happens from three to five, Monday through Thursday up there. Um, we have bas half court basketball. We have a uh, carpet ball, air hockey, foosball, pool table. So there's tons of activities for kids to do. Um, we actually do a snack time at that as well, uh, where kids serve snacks that either people have made snacks for us that we put out or we have just bought chips and cookies and those kind of things. Um, and that's actually kind of a really cool time because a lot of those kids, you know, we do a snack wheel thing so that it's completely fair. So as they come in, they go to whoever's running that that day on their phone and put in their name and we hit the wheel of fortune thing and it comes up with the name of a kid and they get to pick two friends and they are the two that could actually serve in the kitchen oh. that day. So they, they're the ones that choose what snack's going to be. They serve it and clean up after it and put everything away and everything. So it kind of gives them a little bit of ownership too yeah. of everything that's yeah. going on there at the building and and you'd think that you know kids don't want to do that but i mean literally the list is almost every kid every day that's there wants to be on the wheel really? um, to have an opportunity to serve snacks so huh. it's kind of a kind of a cool element and then you know that gives one of our volunteers some time too in the kitchen with them a lot of times just to chat because there's two or three in them in there yeah trying to keep the chaos down so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Let's let's go back and talk a little bit about your story. You you graduated from from Union actually okay. is where I graduated, but I was I grew up here in Legrand. Okay, um, went to school Greenwood and the Island City, and up at the middle school, and okay. was at this high school, and and I was a bit of a knucklehead, so I uh, was getting in trouble quite a bit. <laughs> oh, <that remembers> me. <laughs> So um, I actually, I mean, an interesting part of my story is that I was expelled from the Grand High School. Uh -huh. That's why I ended up in Union. Okay. So it's always uh, <laughs> kind of fun to tell that now because I remember 16 years ago walking back on campus, you know, after taking the Youth for Christ position and having uh, having all the staff that were still there that kind of remembered me. They're like, what? What? You're, you're doing what? <laughs> um, so that was pretty cool to... For a testimony to the Lord, obviously he can change even stupid people like me. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I didn't grow up in it as a Christian. I kind of, like I said, I got in lots of trouble when I was a kid a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, just stupid stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, being a kid and not having a lot of boundaries sometimes. So that's part of why I feel like drop in and some of those things are really important. Because, you know, I mean, if you got parents that work it is really hard to be able to figure out where your kid's going to go that are teenagers between three and five when you're still at work. Right. Um, and have somewhere safe where they can be a kid, but not get in trouble. Cause right. you know, the, as they say, you know, humans are really smart, but a, a group of human beings together is not so smart. Usually we make <laughs> lots of dumb choices when we're together and somebody uh, starts coming up with some right. shenanigans to get us all in trouble kind of thing. Yeah. So, well, and so so then over the years, I'm sure you've seen kids that were very much like you. I mean, like oh, they yeah. they they kind of need some direction or they need something to connect to. And I mean, have you do you feel like you've been able to help some of those kids? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. Actually, like I was saying, a few of our volunteers were some right. of those kids, you know, that uh, were pretty angry and gotten lots of problems and fights and things like that and the until the lord really got a hold of them and yeah. uh, changed kind of the direction of their life and so yeah i i mean i think in some regard you know you, you hear the adage been there done that have the t-shirt so mm -hmm. that's <laughs> somewhat the reality of some of the things i've been through and yeah dumb choices i made so when you have kids showing up that have made those kind of dumb choices you can kind of go yeah i know better yeah. Yeah, you know, you're there's not, a better you're way. Not, yeah, you're not. Yeah, I know not how that anything ends. over on anybody. Yeah. We're, we're aware of what you're doing here. 
Yeah. Um, but I think it also gives you credibility right. in some regard to be able to, to speak to those things. You know, I'm, we always say that empathy is so much stronger than sympathy. You know, sympathy is great. I feel sorry for you for what's going on. Right. But the empathy is I've walked in your shoes. I know what you've been through. I know right. what you're facing. You yeah. Know? And there is, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, we look at the world today. There is a lot of issues at homes and broken homes and single parents and, and they're doing the best they possibly can, but it's a tough scenario. And, and no matter what, it always affects kids, Yeah, you know, regardless of how good the relationship was or how, if you're divorced, how the good the divorce went, or right. even if you're good friends and still co-parenting and that kind of stuff, there's still going to be outcomes that happen from that because it's an emotional hit. You know, it's, we know it's not what God planned. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, you have the the building uh, that you guys are in is right across the street from the high school and and I mean there's a long story there which is super cool you know many years ago some yeah, Christian businessmen in the area <laughs> had the foresight to invest in that building knowing that eventually that would be a great place to to have that. I don't know. Maybe talk about that yeah. a little bit because um, that's that's a fantastic. Well, you know what they story. say: location, location, right. location. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Youth for Christ, the organization locally that I'm the director of, um, has been here for 39 years. So, um, and back in I think it was '88 is when we were uh, kind of started, and then it was right at that time. I think right at '89, '90, right in there that um, the board of directors at the time saw a house that was for sale, and and Dan Milkey was the executive director. Mm -hmm. at that time which is the role i have and uh, they purchased the home that was directly across the street from the high school gym there on the corner of jay and second mm -hmm. hence the name jay house um, because he also ran the koinonia house at the college which is called the k house mm -hmm. so he had the k house and the j house um, for the two different ministries that were happening and it was a little thousand square foot house and through the years and different directors and everything we had basically gutted that thing down to only things that would still hold up the roof kind of mm -hmm. deal. So there was enough space for people to get in and out of there. And for many years, that's where we did ministry was right there. And we had our, uh, our lunches and drop in center. And then we also do our campus life clubs, which is kind of like our youth group nights mm -hmm. uh, for both middle school and high school. So we had those there for a lot of years, but the issue was always going, well, we just don't have the space we need, but it was on a big double lot, which was because it was on the corner and everything, which was really nice. So, uh, the board and I, I mean, probably 11, 12 years ago now, um, started talking about what would it look like to be able to build a new youth center um, for kids here in the community. And growing up here, like Kyle and everything, we uh, there wasn't a ton of things for you to do in La Grange, you know. I mean, there, especially as a kid, we mm -hmm. had the skate and gator and things like that back in the day that went away and bowling alleys and things like that. But so um, anyway, talking about it one of the things we knew we didn't want to do was go in debt uh, just because it's a ministry and you know, there's not always a lot of funds to be able to do everything you need to do. And, and we wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be a burden to the ministry. And it's really more of a means to an end in, in a way. Right. I mean, we're, we love the building we have. It's phenomenal. And I, I am amazed at what the Lord was able to do through all of that to build this new building. But you know, ultimately the ministry is not the building. The ministry right. is the kids. Um, so anyway, long story short, probably 10 years of planning and fundraising and getting some grants. We got a grant from MJ Murdoch for $250,000 that uh, helped cover a lot of the costs of the building. But um, the new facility opened a little over two and a half years ago. Wow. And uh, it's right at a million dollar building and it's debt free. Wow. Uh, we were able to raise the funds through local donors and businessmen and people <clears throat> sponsoring and match funds to grants and all those kind of things to make it work. And then we had an amazing group of contractors, uh, Summit Construction, Joe Seal was our general contractor and did a phenomenal job. And just, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of those guys gave us a lot of extra leeway and grace at times when bills were coming. And if we didn't have money yet, they were like, well, we'll just keep working. Um, Cause we did have a point where it really kind of tested our faith a little bit as a board and me, cause, uh, kind of got to the bottom of the barrel and was going, well, we don't have all the money we need to be paying all the contractors. And, you know, we even went to contractors and said, Hey, would you, uh, 
stop for a while because we're probably not going to be able to pay you. And without, without any of them backing off, every one of them said, no, we're going to just keep going. We'll keep putting it together. We'll figure it out. And, you know, and I think it was about that time we had a huge gift come in from a local donor of about $70,000 to finish the project out, which was unbelievable. Right. Um, but it definitely stretched my faith and the right. board's faith to go, okay, well, God, it's your building. It's your, your project. You'll, you'll fund it how you need to. And yeah, sometimes, you know, we always hear the saying that God's kind of a last minute God and that's just because <laughs> it's in his timing, not ours, but we always are yeah. feel like last minute for us because we waited till the 99th hour and then it comes through. So, wow. So you have a, and you have a, a good relationship. Talk about your relationship with LeGrand high school and, and yeah. also the, the coffee shop too, part of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we've had a great relationship with both the schools, the middle school and high school for a lot of years. Um, a lot of years I was, on campus when we had the little building um, for lunches and different things throughout the time doing tiger eyes with your mom and, and folks like that. And just hanging out. We used to, when they used to do a ton of dances after all the football games, mm -hmm. our, our crew usually was one of the bunch that was in their chaperone and dances and stuff like that. So, you know, over the years we've had a really good relationship working together and um, it's probably about four years ago, uh, Corey Ackerman who runs the taste of the tiger coffee shop at the high school which is a as student ran um, coffee shop that's actually kind of for special needs and at risk teens to get job skill. So they had a program where they were doing all that and had grants to kind of keep that program going. But um, the way things changed out, you couldn't have anything sugary in school. Um, I think in the <laughs> Obama era that took place. That's right. And, yeah. uh, and what happened is they they came to us and asked, "Hey, is there any chance we could maybe figure out some way to?" do the coffee shop offsite because they were actually going to lose state funding mm. for lunches and all that kind of stuff if they continued on campus. Um, so it, in our old building, we had a little computer lab area that, uh, or actually it was my office originally that we cut a hole in the wall and made a roll up door and turned it into the coffee shop in the original J house. And then uh, when we were building this one, we made, intentionality of just sitting down with them and going, okay, what is, what do you guys really need for a coffee shop and carving out a space in the front of the building for that. So it's really cool. They're there um, usually Monday through Friday in the mornings and at lunch and it's open to public. It's open to the students, but there's an outside walk up window that you can come to. They usually have like a summer crew that's actually working right, out of yeah. there and everything. Um, I got soft serve ice cream and all sorts of stuff. So lots of, lots of cool stuff and a great way for kids to just get some job skill. Um, but it runs every time we have a lunch. So we have an indoor window too, that goes to the cafeteria side of things or the gym side of things where we're serving lunch and there's usually a big line at their window and a big line to get tacos or something. So it's kind of a, been a great partnership. Yeah. Um, and they just rent the space and it, you know, affords them somewhere to be and continue their programming. And cause it's a really good program. Yeah. And, um, you know, it works well for us too, cause it's a draw for, students come over there maybe that wouldn't have come in the J house otherwise. Right. So. so do you, I mean the whole family and I love the family. I mean, we see this everywhere in Legrand because of the size of our community. Everybody knows one another or they have history with people in each yeah. other and stuff. And so, I mean, are there times that that relationship that you've been, that you built with the high school or even, even the junior high school, because I know the principal of the, I mean, every, all of those people are all connected in some oh, manner, you know. Uh, we communicate. Right, and that's other, what I'm right. Do you stuff, ever have so. like conversations like, well, hey, this kid, I've sent him your, I'm sending him your way and, you know, did he make it? And, you know, I mean. Yeah, is there... occasionally there's conversations like that or if they're, you know, you got a kid that's really struggling, something right. we see, we can kind of talk with counselors right. and stuff and just give them a heads up a little bit too. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, as much as you can do that with all the HIPAA laws right, and all those right. kind of things, everybody's really good about just trying to stay on the same page as a team, right. you know, um, to do that. So yeah, I would, what's going on and things they're seeing. And, um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's one of the benefits to a small community is we know each other and a lot of us grew up together or have been here long enough to kind of, have some, you know, 
credibility with one another on on who's doing what so and i think that's even true with like the the sheriff's department you know they have um officer hernandez or deputy hernandez who's yeah. on on campuses and stuff and he comes over occasionally at j house and hangs out during lunchtime or things like that so there you know there's good rapport that way so that it is a community effort you know what they say it takes a village and it does so and that and that's part of you know that's part of the family aspect when you have grandkids and cousins and i mean there's this huge benefit to having that having that big family because the uncle can say something that the parent could never say and yeah. so on and so forth and so there's a little bit of that same dynamic yeah. in these types of relationships i always chuckle because i get lots of text messages or even phone calls sometimes from parents sure so, so thank you so much for saying what you said because i've been saying that for months to my kid Right. And they haven't actually, you know, they think I'm dumb, so they don't listen to me right. yeah. or whatever. And all of a sudden, because Kevin said it, then it's, you know, gospel. <laughs> so now we're going to do it. And it's like, just been saying the same thing you're saying. You yeah. Know? I mean, so it's just funny how that does work for yeah. sure. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a, uh, it's important because, you know, I mean, we all want to be known. And um, so I think the more of us that as a community know kids and, and interact with them and actually get engaged with them, you know, it helps to keep them on the right path and make good choices, hopefully. Yeah. So. Good. So you, you've done a ton. I mean, man, there's been a lot that has been accomplished in 16 years and you, you know, the amount of changes that you brought that building, the original building and morphed it through. And then now to this new facility and the new programs. And is there anything big out there that you have in mind that you're like, Hmm. sometime it'd be really cool for us to develop this area. Yeah. I mean, I think as a board, um, one of the things we would love to get to is get to where we're, you know, having more staff for one um, locally to be able to pour into kids here at the J house. But ultimately, again, like we said, the building is a, a end to a means. It's not the, the um, thing we're after as much or a means to an end, I guess I should say, but we're hoping to be able to get out in some of the outlying communities eventually, you know, and be out in Embler and Cove and Elgin and Union and have campus life clubs at those schools as well. That would be kind of the long-term desire um, mm -hmm. to, to see ministry grow in our area and have even more kids getting involved. Yeah. So. Well, cool. Well, Kevin, thanks so much. I guess one more question I meant to ask okay. is talk about summer camps because that's a, a, a lot of what you're doing is, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, just talk about the significance of summer camps and how that fits into the program. Yeah. Well, I mean, ministry happens on a day to day basis, right. obviously, as you well know, as right. a former youth pastor and everything, but, but summer camps kind of tend to be the culmination of a year of pouring into kids. Um, so we get to do a couple different ones. So we actually do a road trip for our high school. So we'll be going to San Francisco this summer. Um, and we partner with a church down there and we partner with another youth for Christ out of Eugene, Oregon, Lane County. And um, we'll go down there and they'll have a chance to go to like Six Flags and some of those kind of places and Alcatraz and make some really cool memories. But, you know, they'll also be we have a program team that will actually have games and activities and stuff they're doing and worship and, and the gospel be proclaimed. And, you know, we're, we're praying for lots of kids to make decisions. Um, and then we also we'll take our middle school group over to Eugene area, which is who we partner with Lane County. And uh, they have a camp over there called sky camp. That's on a lake that able to do tubing and paintballing and fun things like that as well. Um, and it's, you know, week long. What's great is you get a kid out of their regular environment, right. um, regardless if that's good or bad or anything at home, but right. just get them out of their regular environment at middle school. We, they don't even have cell phones the entire week, which, you know, as you can imagine, is like pulling teeth the day you get there. <laughs> but what's funny is by the end of the week, a lot of times kids are like, ah, I don't even really need that, you know, because they've actually had to socially interact right. with each other and, and leaders all week. So it's been kind of a, a huge thing. And then, uh, yeah, we just they have a chance to make a decision again and hear the gospel and do worship and just really cool things happen in camp because I think the longevity of it where you're a week together and you're 24 seven with your leaders that you've been seeing every right. Monday or Thursday night at campus life club, you know? So yeah. it's kind of the, the culmination, like I say, of building a lot of relationship throughout the year and trust. So, yeah. Well, very cool. And I, 
you know, again, really appreciate yours and Kim's dedication and all of the herd of volunteers that, that it takes to make that happen. And I, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of credit and added boys to all of those people. That's just totally Yeah, we cool. couldn't do it without our volunteers. Yeah. We have an amazing group of volunteers. So. And then also the sponsors. I mean, $1,000, $1,000 a week just in food costs. Yeah. And I don't know, how many weeks do you have of 30 or 40? 33. 33, you know, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you have, yeah, so you have $35,000 just in food costs approximately. Approximately, yeah. Yeah, a year. Yeah, in a school yeah. year. Yeah, and so that's just, that's crazy. So then this this event, and tell us when this event specifically. Uh, yeah, so Friday the 3rd okay. at 7 p.m. is when it will go live on our website. Okay. Yours, and, uh like I say, if you're able to join us, we would love to have you be a part of it and hear about the ministries more in depth and, and hear kids' testimonies about um, what's been happening in their lives. So we'd love to have you be a part of it and just thank all our home hosts and those that are uh, already planning to have people over to your own house and, and sponsor it that way. And it, like I say, it is one of our biggest fundraisers. We're um, hoping to raise enough program funds for you know this next school year. Yeah, so. good deal. Well, cool. Well, thanks. Well, hey, we'll just leave Kevin here with us if you want. Yeah. Go. Cool. Well, on this day, what is today? January 26th, 1875. The electric dental drill is patented by George F. Green. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the worst. So here's the worst. Okay. My sophomore year, I fall out of the back of a truck, right? Smash my face all up. Have to have teeth put back in. Well, to have teeth put back in, they have to cauterize your gums. Uh, right? So they burn your gums back so they'll grow back over. That's the worst. The Smelling your own flesh. <laughs> it's terrible. Thanks for that mental. Oh, it's bad. Dude. <laughs> have you ever had them? Cauter have you ever yeah. had to have a tooth put back I've in? I've had a lot of teeth issues, but not, yeah. not cauterizing. Yeah, they, they burn them back, your gums, so they can put your tooth back in and your gums will grow back over. Yeah. It's, uh, it's nasty. 1887, ground is broken and construction begins on the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, which it just got done being renovated. 1887? Yeah. 1954, groundbreaking begins on Disneyland. Good morning, Justin. What's up? 1979, the Dukes of Hazard premieres on US TV network CBS. Oh, this is a bad one. 1998, Bill Clinton says, I want to say one thing to the American people. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. <laughs> uh, it was that, that's so long ago, if you think about it. 98? Like, that's 25 years ago. It's crazy. Like, yeah. 2016, leader of Oregon militia, Amon Bundy, occupying Malheur County Wildlife Refuge, refuge was arrested, and one of his people were killed in a shootout with federal agents. What, what that's already that? been seven years. What year was that? 2016. Wow. It was the Almon Bundy thing down well, there yeah. in, out here. Crazy. It, it's, time's just flying. I don't even remember COVID. <laughs> like that, that, that time just went by so fast. Number one movie in America on this day in 2003, Darkness Falls. <clears throat> and then quote for the day. Stop texting first and see how many dead plants you've been watering. <laughs> so read that one more time. Stop texting first. And see how many dead plants you've been watering. Which me, I'm a, I'm not a big texter, so I'm not like the kind of person that's going to like, hey, I hope you're having a great day. You know, like, it's just not my MO. But there are a lot of people that put a lot of time into texting and, and making sure people are okay and don't get responses. Seriously. Yeah. like, and, and it's like, I don't know. It's one of those ones where I would much rather say hi to somebody face to face. Much rather. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm not a. I'm not big on the cell phone thing, <laughs> even though you absolutely have to have it nowadays. Um, I was one of those people that held out a long time, dude. Like I was like, no, you're not. I was like, if you want to talk to me and I don't answer, leave a message on the home phone. You know what I mean? Like I am not going to Nobody text. Even has a home phone. Uh, no, uh, exactly. Very few. Yeah, that's it. Only businesses, huh? Landlines, pretty much. Pretty much. Yep. That's it. All right. Don't forget, tomorrow, LHS basketball at home versus Baker, 6 and 7.30 for varsity. And then uh, 
Tigers. EOU uh, basketball tomorrow at noon and two against Walla Walla, and then four and six um, against Lewis and Clark State College on Saturday at home, Quinn Coliseum. Tomorrow, kids get in free at EOU. Yeah, good stuff. That's it. All righty. Thank you, Eastern Oregon. Thanks, Kevin, for being with us. See you Tuesday. Thank you, guys. Yep. See you soon.